Ever since it was introduced in 1968, the MPAA's G rating has been assigned to assure audiences that the movie they're about to watch is good, wholesome entertainment that the whole family can enjoy. Or at least that's what it's supposed to mean. But every now and then, something truly disturbing slips through the cracks and makes you wonder just how many of the ratings board members were actually paying attention during their screenings. Get ready to revisit your most memorable childhood traumas as we dive into the most disturbing moments in G-rated movie history. All Dogs Go to Heaven, except this one time. Despite the cute, reassuring title of All Dogs Go to Heaven, the film presented an afterlife that's actually pretty messed up. In the beginning of the movie, our four-legged hero Charlie is shown getting drugged and literally murdered by his business partner. To repeat, the dog is betrayed, intoxicated, and then killed in the opening act. And that's not even the worst of it. Since all dogs supposedly go to heaven, Charlie finds himself at the pearly gates and decides he isn't ready to chill with God Dog just yet. I don't want to die. <laughs> you got the wrong guy. Why? Because he's got to get revenge first. But once he sets out on his return to Earth plan, it eventually dawns on him that he might have just blown his shot at spending eternity in the good place. So there's an extended nightmare sequence in which Charlie is told he can't return to heaven and has to go to doggy hell instead. And the filmmakers did not hold back on how terrible that eventuality would be. His vision is a straight up lake of fire hell where Satan rises from the flames as a dragon and tortures him with demons. It's as if Dante Alighieri scripted this thing himself. Or maybe just Ronnie James Dio. All those little tykes watching that scene were probably scarred for life and terrified about what might come after. The Deadly Burden of Intelligence Picking out a single disturbing moment from The Secret of Nim is pretty difficult. But my son's life is in great danger. Remember the climactic fight scene when the mean rat slices another across the chest before getting stabbed in the gut and then daggered in the back? That's pretty brutal stuff for a grade schooler to witness. But perhaps the most horrifying moment comes in when we find out the reason all our rodent pals are suddenly so smart and self-aware. As it turns out, they were captured from the streets and given intelligence enhancement treatments at a human medical lab. The medicine worked, so when the rats try to escape the facility and most of them die in the process, they can actually fully comprehend the value of their lives before losing them. Sid's Toys there's a good chance that Sid Phillips is the single most terrifying villain in Disney's entire filmography. It's not just that he attempts to shoot Buzz Lightyear into space with fireworks, that's actually one of the more normal things he does. He also has a little toy lab at home where he rips all kinds of playthings apart just so he can Frankenstein stitch them back together in supremely freakish ways. Some of his creepiest creations include a severed doll head with a gouged eye that's been grafted onto a spider-like metal body and a pair of Barbie legs attached to a fishing reel. <gasps> They look menacing enough, but what's truly disturbing is the fact that we know all these toys are secretly alive, and that they're probably actually suffering during all of Sid's experiments. Sex Tree The same company that brought us those classic feel-good holiday films like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town also tried to get theatrical with 1982's The Last Unicorn, and the results were pretty surreal. The film follows a unicorn who's trying to find others of her kind but becomes trapped in a carnival filled with all kinds of tortured animal souls, including a bird lady with three giant breasts. She eventually makes pals with a half-wit wizard named Schmindrick who helps her escape. My dear, you deserve the services of a great wizard, but I'm afraid you'll have to be glad of the aid of a second-rate pickpocket. Along their journey, he accidentally uses his transformative magic on a tree, which wants nothing more than to make little saplings with him. Oh, oh, I love you. So if you know any 80s kids with a strange fetish for giant wooden boobs, well, this is probably why. I love you. Love, 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 love. Oh, what have I done? The Psychedelic Terror Tunnel 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory has been an almost universally beloved children's movie for nearly 50 years. But the whole thing is pretty cruel and wicked if you think about it. Consider when young Augustus Gloop is nearly drowned in a chocolate river because he goes for the chocolate water in a room that Wonka tells him is entirely edible. Or when Violet Beauregard is basically blown up for taking an unapproved bite of candy and has to be juiced by the Oompa Loompas, whatever that entails. And Wonka himself is far creepier than any ironic punishment his factory could contain. The climax of the film hinges on him manipulating and lying to everyone around him as a test to find a worthy replacement. In other words, he spends the entire movie messing with kids' minds just for the hell of it. In one especially terrifying scene, he takes everyone through his strobe-lit psychedelic tunnel just to shock them with imagery of a worm crawling over a dead man's face and a live chicken having its head cut off with a meat cleaver. Throw in Willie's sinister slam poetry. Is the grizzly reaper mowing? Yes! 
The danger must be growing for the rowers. Keep on rowing. And you've got yourself one of the greatest nightmares ever committed to film. But hey, how about all that tasty candy, kids? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.